Hey, uh, chickadees, I'm Lay Rooster, and you're in the Hen House. We're looking at some ships today and a ship overview for the low level beginner players, intermediate players in the in the level one, level teens and tens, as well as up into the early 20s and stuff, looking at the stuff that you worry about before you start getting into some of the bigger stuff. No, not to push down on the little ones, but there's different things you want to keep in mind because not all ships are created equal and you are moving through ships pretty quickly. So we want to talk about that, want to break that down. People are asking me a lot of questions on the different streams, which I have on Twitch as well as on YouTube. Make sure you check the check the links below for that. Um, and I want to go through that. Here in the background, we've just got some aftermath of a territory battle that we just did with my uh, alliance on my main. It was a lot of fun. And... Um, you can look, there's probably going to be a video once I get this stuff edited out. But let's look at, in order to look at this and get these ships going on, let's pull up blue stacks instead of the game. And we're going to, um, we're going to the, my baby account, uh, forever 14, as I've called it. All right. So it helps a little better because we can look at the ships in the ship construction. And if we pull the drop down here by shipyard level, it gives me a little better idea because once, you know, when you're in the higher levels, it's harder to remember what level something comes out. So it doesn't show the level something comes out if I've already reached that level, but there's far less there. So let's look at that. Happy to have you with me. And I want to answer some of these questions that you've had. I appreciate all the help that you guys have done. Make sure you subscribe. We're pushing, we're well over 300 subscribers now. Want to push on to four and 500 quickly and hit that thousand mark bell um, really quickly to really help um, help us with our, our growth goals. So you can help with that. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, and follow to the event here. All right, let's see. So um, these are just going to be some different notes about playing it, particularly if you're playing it later. I'm level 30, ops level 35, soon to be 36, and um, you know nothing at the end, but definitely in the mid midst of the game at this point. So it gives a different perspective than when you're first going through it. There's actually a lot of fun stuff that happens in the beginning because you're getting ships fast and furiously, uh, not like the show. Um, but it really helps because that means there's another ship coming. So that also means that you want to be careful and figure out, do you need to waste a lot of resources or time on some of these ships? And some of them have different payouts, either in the immediate term or also in the longer term when you're at level 35, level 40 and onward and all that stuff that I'm like working on or trying to keep in mind. I want to pass that stuff on to you and help you out. So hopefully that'll help. Let's get this uh, screen maximized here. All right. So first one you start off with is the Rialta. Everybody's got this ship and you know, you want to build it up while you're using it. Okay. You do want to, this one's easy. Max this ship out. It's not going to take long. All right. Now what's the point in this? Oh, I, one issue also to be aware of is later on in the twenties, you're going to get the ability to scrap, uh, at some point. And I forget, I'm sorry. I forget more. Maybe somebody will put it down in chat. At some point, you get the ability to scrap, and some of the a lot of these ships can be scrapped. Some of them shouldn't be scrapped, and some of them are worthwhile to scrap, particularly when they're leveled up because of the resources that you get. That's probably for another video, but I want you to bear in mind that some ships are scrappable, and sometimes you're going to want to you know work on them uh, because you're going to eventually want to scrap them at high level. So we're gonna that's going to come into play later as we talk about some of these ships. Now the Rialta. This is a unique ship. It's your first ship. Um, everybody likes it. It looks a little bit like the Enterprise when you first start to play the game because it's, you know, a disc. That's about it. Um, but you're just playing with it. Keep this ship. Don't try to scrap it. Don't get rid of it. One of the reasons to do that, one, it's pretty darn unique. You're never going to get the ship again. Lots of people, there are some techniques when it comes to battle, trying to throw Rialta or spam Rialtas at people in battles just to tie up ships. So that's a use, and it's extremely cheap to repair. So um, it's useful. It's never going to actually do anything, but it could be an annoyance, a mosquito, you know, on an ox uh, when you're in battles. Also, um, we have periodic events that happen every, I don't know if it's three or six months, called the Rialta Rumble, where you're going to be told to go into a Rialta section, kill, kill hostiles and kill each other in PvP events with the Rialta. You need your Rialta to do that. You can go through customer service to get it if you've scrapped it. But you might as well just keep it, make sure it's leveled up, and then have some fun when that event comes around um, four, two or four times a year. Um, I forget. So keep it, build it up. You're not going to waste anything. The Orion Corvette. Now, this is a battleship. All right, this is a baby, right? You're going to use this 
um, until you get another better ship, which will not take long while you're playing the game. Now, the ECS Fortunate. This is your miner. These guys can't go very far, but you need to be mining. It needs to teach you to mine, um, and you need to start mining as soon as you can so you can get those resources, get some of your daily activities done with your two stars and that kind of thing that you're going to do with the miners. So the battleship, the Orion Corvette, is used until you get a stronger ship, which is going to be when you get this Fendra. And then the ECS Fortunate is going to be your miner. And this miner doesn't get replaced until you hit level 16 and can get the Envoy. Now, um, that's a big deal because level 15 or 14 is where you camp. Because at level 15 is when you have to start shielding. So 14 is a really good camp spot. Like my Forever 14 can only get Fortunate. So you have to make use of them. Um, you don't need to build them up for PvP or anything. They're not going to withstand any attacks. Basically, if you get attacked by somebody, you're going to die. So it doesn't matter how strong they are. You just want to build them up for mining. Um, but, and it depends also on how long you're camping. If you are 14 camping, uh, they're going to be more useful longer for you. But the Corvette won't because you will get the Fendra. So you get an Interceptor, right? And uh, so, again, then the Fendra and the Taurus come in. You get the Fendra, then the Taurus in those early teens before you hit 15. Um, and so that gives you an Interceptor and it gives you an Explorer. So with the Corvette, you get um, you got a Battleship, an Interceptor, and an Explorer. You got the three. The Corvette, though, is really just your first bigger Battleship in the very beginning to get you through those level five um, activities and all that. So don't worry about that. Don't waste a lot of resources on that. Now here, Fendra and Taurus, um, these matter. Um, and you're also going to get that Tala. Pay no, pay no attention at the briefly at the moment for the jellyfish, because that's going to be your real battleship if you're working in this area of the high teens uh, or the mid teens where you're in that 14 or higher level. Now, so for the Fendra, getting that, you can you can do a lot if you're in the 14s with your Fendra built up pretty well. Interceptors are nice. They can attack battleships, so they'll be able to attack the Talas that people have a little later. Um, and they get killed by Tauruses, but, you know, they're fast. They can fly away. So it's okay to build that stuff up, but these are going to be scrappable ships and all that. Um, the Taurus is a little bit special because it is, um, it is an explorer. So um, it's nice to have an explorer to beat up on these Fendra if you need to. However, if you're going to earn or buy the jellyfish, it's the game. This is the game changer, and it's an explorer. So if you have in mind of getting the jellyfish, don't even waste stuff on the tourists. Get your jellyfish and put your resources into that. This you can get. You can buy as early as level fourteen. You can earn for free by level. Um, 18 for sure during, during some events, and I earned it for free at level 14, um, uh, doing multiple events over time uh, with free-to-play activities. So um, this rules the world in this area. When you're dealing with Fendra, Taurus, and Tala, it don't matter if you got a jellyfish and you got it built up, you're going to take these guys out. So if you're 14, 15, 16, your jellyfish really helps rock the world. It's a reason to consider buying one or making sure you earn one. But so the Fendra is a good one again because that's kind of your sneak attack, heavy damage to blow things up when you're blowing up miners, things like that in the beginning. Taurus, probably not as much so because the jellyfish is so much more important. And then the Tala. Um, now, because of the battle triangle, you it is nice to have nice to have an interceptor and an explorer, one of these two and a battleship for grinding hostels. You're going to want that, and you want to be able to grind the different types of hostels and systems, and that's going to vary by system. So you want to have a ship that's ready to grind those hostels. So if you aren't using the jellyfish, the tourist becomes more important during this early... Uh, these are... All right, as we move past the Tala, we get to the Envoy. This is where shipyard level 16 kicks into play. This is a decent miner. The, the Fortunate is not a very good miner, but this one is a decent miner for you. And it comes into play, and you're going to use it for a long time, into your 20s. So you're going to have multiple envoys um, going on. Now, another thing, um, also, there's a, there is a technique where you build envoys. You max them out. 
you max them out and then you scrap them later on in the game and you get three star materials after spending other materials and two star materials. So it's kind of a win, a win situation. Um, I do this uh, from time to time to get three star material later on. Uh, you may want to do this. Depends on how much you want to spend. You can you can cheat through it with latinum. So it depends on how much latinum you have. Um, so don't be afraid to max out your envoys. You're going to want to be able to get the most that you can get out. And you want your whole fleet when you can do like three ships. You want three envoys when you're mining on mining Mondays and things like that. So you're going to be wanting to do that and using them to shuffle using two miners and then a third miner to shuffle between them, to shuffle them back to your base, things like that, once you start doing the shuffle techniques. Um, so that's your level 16. So those are important, and don't worry about maxing them out because you will be scrapping them later and benefiting from that. You can, you can scrap some of these guys, but it's not as uh, good as the Envoy is in the early stage. Now I'm going to give you just a little bit of comments about some of these specialty ships that come up. All right, USS Franklin available as early as ship level 17. There's all storyline behind it. You want to get this, make sure you get the Franklin. The story will help you get that. Make sure you build this. Don't waste on this. Don't wait on this. Uh, build up your Franklin. Whenever you slow down on your Franklin or when your level ops level exceeds your Franklin um, progression, what happens is you start being unable to take care of the swarm, to do the different things that are tied to your dailies. You'll know because you won't be able to kill it. There's a point in the 20s where I and many others in my old alliance, we were like, oh, we can't use this Franklin for anything. We're doing our swarm dailies with other ships. That's when you know your Franklin has been not kept up. Uh, don't make those same mistakes that I made and many others do. Try to keep your Franklin up. It is a pain to grind and you may feel like, oh, this is gonna take forever. Grind every day, grind at least every other day. You will find that it pays off in the end. I'm now in, in the 30s. I'm loving the fact that I finally caught my Franklin back up to my own level. It makes a huge difference with your dailies and all kinds of activities. Swarm Sunday, everything is uh, much better when you stay on top of the Franklin. Now, Botany Bay, again, you are going to need data. Um, and... You're going to need data. You're not going to want to get data and all that, but go through, get this sucker out, get it maxed out over time. So you're maxing your Franklin, you're maxing your Botany Bay. Um, in the beginning, the Botany Bay, once once you get it closer to max, is going to have more, more rating strength for you as a cargo hauler, hauler um, in the early stages before you get your horizons built up. It's going to beat out your envoys and really help you out. So it's going to help with some base rating and draining those bases because you're going to get a lot more space there in your cargo. You, due to most rows out there on servers, people are going to blow you up if you try to mine anything but data with a botany bay. But you are going to need to regularly mine data one way or the other, whether you skip the events, which I tend to, but my, I mine off events. You do need that, and it is the best thing for mining that data. So... Don't worry about putting some points into that or your Franklin. Now, the North Star. This is another. This is this. This is a Jellyfish 2.0. North Star is available later on, free to play slowly. Um, however, you can buy it as early as level 18. You can buy it for 20 bucks. Now, this is one of those things where it's a bit of a game changer. All right. So again, 20 bucks. You got a North Star. This is a very fast three-star miner. You have to watch it like a hawk, but it can mine really fast. But what makes it also special, it is it is a bit of a tank. So you can use this ship and build it up. Um, I maxed my North. If you get a North Star, max it out. Um, honestly, when I got this at level 18, it ends up being max maxing out. I think the first time I stopped using this as my main warship, um, was probably around level ops level 24, maybe a little higher with some of these ships that we're going to come into because it can really hang. So if you are willing to spin and get it early, you get a kind of a, a jump. If you earn it later, it's good. I still use it to this day when I'm shuffling miners and things like that. And it is a very fast, though short term miner, but that can really help um, with some stuff. It has, it's a fast ship, so it can get and secure a node quickly. It also has a high warp range relative to the other ships of its uh, size and level. And so it can go a lot of places where only my horizons and other and faction miners can go later. So, so that's great. Um, so get it at some point, whether you do it free later or spend the 20 bucks, get it and then spend some points in it. Uh, it'll crack bases. It'll do all kinds of things in the low levels. And it, it is a joy. Um, okay, so...
So then you get into the Kira, which is, gives you a level 20, level 20 interceptor. Again, just like scrolling back here to the Fendra, it's a it's it's replacing your interceptor. It's a beefier version. Again, it's good. It's going to be good for some PvP in this level, so around 20 and all that. Your North Star, you're going to have to watch out for these North Stars, just like the just like the uh, the Fendra has to look out for those jellyfish. All right. So, um, but this is this is going to be a good thing that you can build up for fast blow up attacks and of course some grinding, uh, some hostile grinding and that sort of thing. I'm going to skip the discovery for a second. Um, well, it's 21. Let's talk about it briefly. The discovery, you've seen it on the show. If you've seen the show, if not, check the show out, you know. Um, but um, it's it's an explorer. It is this is a one-trick pony. All right, this will mine your mycelium and it jumps around like the song says. But once you get it built up later, it teleports. It, it is a taxi. That's what it's for. I don't even have that unlocked yet on my 35. Um, but I'm working on it and I was a little delayed on getting it. Get this when you can and work on it, particularly maybe maybe upgrade it during events and all that. Um, and you'll use it on those um, the Swarm Sunday anomalous phenomenon events where um, it really makes completing those events simple and quick, uh, which helps you get officers and other material, material to upgrade it and all that. So you do want to get it. Don't skip it and build it up. Once you can get it to teleport other ships places, it really is going to uh, be a bit of a game changer, but it's not going to be, it's not going to do anything else. Um, people use it to help with war, to help with armadas, to help with uh, different things like that. Um, but you'll want it. Um, so get it at that point. So you got your Kara at level 20, your interceptor. Then at level 22, you get this somewhat strange looking Vaklas, which is an explorer, but is in the disc. You know, like uh, like we see with uh, enterprise type things and all that. Now, this is good. It, um, it's an explorer. So, uh, this is the first ship you're going to build this explorer up. A lot of times, people, if your Franklin's not up to speed, you start trying to use your Voclus because it's a stronger ship. But it's an explorer class, so it helps against those swarm. Not as good as the Franklin if you keep it up to up to snuff, but it still does help. And again, it gives you something for some of those battles um, with explorers against particularly Kiras because you know it's uh it takes out interceptors um and uh and before you get your Kumari now your Ferengi Devor comes in at level 23 um again it's a one trick pony this is for mining your latinum um but latinum mining we have mining monday event and you want latinum because that's in-game currency and in-game gold that kind of thing so you want to get it. I have two. You will get them naturally from some of your loyalty chests as you get the blueprints. So that's how I got my second one. But, you know, I got this one. Um, once you start building it up, and particularly if you pay attention to the Latinum, uh, Latinum mining resources and research, then you'll get really a big boost. It turns it turns Mining Monday, Latinum Monday into, um, into a bit of a laugh. It doesn't take very long. But it also helps you keep your coffers full and start really growing in lat. So that that's good, but that's all it's for. You're not gonna, you're gonna fight something. You're not gonna hit an occasional scout that runs by you. None of that. All right. Then you get your Kamari. That's your battleship. So you're getting a battleship. You've got an explorer, and you've got an interceptor as your main, your main three ships. That tends to be some of the progression that you get in the game. So this is good. Battleships are particularly good for killing a lot of hostiles. They're very slow. They move like tractors, but they can usually grind through because they have a really strong hull. And they can wear down and kill more hostiles than a lot of the other ships, especially interceptors when you're doing a lot of hostile grinding where you have to kill a lot of hostiles. And you don't want to have to stop and repair over and over. So that can be good. It can also, battleships can also be kind of helpful when you're cracking bases that are level appropriate. Because again, they can wear things down. They can last longer in fights, even though they don't hit as hard as like the interceptors do. So keep that in mind. All of the Vaklas, Kumari, and Kira's this this range of the um, the three types of ships, they don't have very mixed things. They've got the battleship has all energy weapons. You know the Vaklas has all energy weapons. The Kira has got its uh, you know its kinetic weapons. So that comes into play when we're talking about officer loadouts and things like that. But that's for another video. It gets more complicated as you get to some more complicated ships where you get some options that you didn't have before. Just be aware. It kind of trains you on the classes of the ships. Um, now, when it comes to the Kira, the Vaklas, and the Kumari, 
um, which you're going to have Kamari at 24, 22 on the Vaklis, and 20 at the Kira. So you're going to be going every two levels. Boom, I get a new type of ship and a new one. You know, you want to keep three of them, but these are not the ships you want to max out. So again, don't waste your resources. You may later come back to these much later when you want to scrap them if they seem worth it. And I'm not 100% sure that they are. Um, but basically, you know, you're going to bring things up in that tier four to six range um, to get them where they're doing what you want them to do. If they're killing the hostiles that you're regularly trying to kill, then they're doing good. If they're helping you to PvP what you need to PvP, then they're doing their job. You don't need to bring them higher. There's going to be more ships coming, and you're going to want to use those resources later for those better ships. So keep that in mind. All right, after the Kabar. We do get to the Meridian, one of the new ships, and again, that's for mining ISO. You do want to get it, and uh, it's going to be, it's pretty level locked, so you're going to use it and uh, keep it, but get it, unlock it, and start working on it. Use it, use it to actively mine ISO. Um, that's all it's good for. Now, the Vidar, another special one. You get this one at level shipyard, level 25. Vidar is special. It's a specialty ship made for um, made for farming Borg probes in Borg space. All right, so that's like the Franklin that's made to farm swarm, swarm, swarm swarms, um, you know, in swarm space, right? Um, so you do need it for that. That's a mechanic. It happens all the time. We have events for the Borg probe. Um, farming usually that's paired with swarm but it comes up all the time in arcs and other events but what makes it interesting this is an interceptor this ship you can max this sucker out go ahead and take it to the moon and back all right because it's a good ship it's good for pvping and opl farming and, and hitting people it has a really large cargo bay so it is good for hitting people um, if you're hitting miners in uh, that are OPL or something, if you're following row, and if you're a pirate, it's a great ship. Um, it's also pretty fast. You can make it faster. So it's good for PvP skirmishing. You can use it in some stuff to kind of mix it up with people and to stay ahead of them. Um, so it's it's unlike the Franklin, which is never you're never going to see that in PvP or some other place. You're not going to take it against hostiles. The Vidar is something that you can actually take against other types of hostiles. It can help you in a faction hunt when you're trying to get a fourth ship or a third ship. Um, so feel free to dump dump those resources in there. And that Borg probe and Borg refinery stuff is an essential thing. You want to be able to farm those quickly and reliably. All right, so that's 25 on the Vidar. The ECS Horizon comes in at level 26. Okay, now this is this is your main miner. This is the main miner of the game, really, the Horizon. Uh, you're going to have several of these over time. Uh, initially, you're going to have like one Horizon. You're going to have some envoys, and you're moving some stuff out. These guys have good, they have good rates of return for three stars. They have good cargo holds. Um, so they're going to be pretty good. You're going to want to build these up. You're going to have to sink some serious resources in them to build them up. Again, you're going to want to make them do what you want them to do, get them to go as far away as you want, and they can do some serious mining. It's where you really start doing the serious mining, longer, longer, larger nodes, longer mining sessions, things like that, where you don't have to deal with things um, and get some stuff. I use them today. I still will. Uh, later on, you'll use some of the faction miners, but because of their somewhat prohibitive cost, you may still end up using plenty of horizons in addition to some faction miners. That's what I do. Um, and, uh, you know, so these are good. So don't be afraid to spend some in here during an event or things like that, but be careful because you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul when you spend some of the stuff on the horizon that you could be spending on some battleships. So be aware of that. And so that's the entree to level 26. And as we're going to finish up on this video, we're looking at the, the ones that come for level 26. That's the D3, um, and the the Mayflower and the Legionary. Why do three ships three ships come at that time? That's the faction ships. So at that point, you know, you've already picked your factions. Hopefully you are dual, dual faction grinding, because this will really help you out at this point. This is when you'll finally say, oh, I see why I did this. So make sure you do that once you hit around level 14, 15, trying to build up two factions instead of one, because you'll be able to build two of these ships instead of one. So your faction will determine what you can build here. Um, the Klingons do the D3 as an interceptor. The Enterprise, the Federation does the Mayflower. 
and the uh, Romulans do the Legionary. So Legionary is a battleship, Mayflower is an explorer, and the D3 is an interceptor. So you get the triangle, the battle triangle. So it's going to depend. The people you're fighting against are going to have some of these other ones or some of the same. And if you do dual dual class, you can get two of them. If you, do, if you pull off triple, more power to you, you can get all three of them. Um, so things about these ships. Well, they're pretty good. And they're going to help you mix it up in PvP, in some base raiding, in some defense. You're going to use them all the time for hostile grinding and all that stuff. Do you want to max them? Well, nah, not really. Um, like the Legionary, people don't talk about maxing the Legionary at all. All right. You're going to get a better, you're going to get better ships at level 28 and stuff like that. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, and generally, people don't talk about maxing the Legionary. People do talk about maxing the Mayflower and the D3. But that's not what you do when you're playing with them. It's what you do later on in order to use them for scrapping because they help you get the four star primes. So it's like something you like build them up to the point where they uh, do what you need them to do until you have the other ships that come in at 28 and onward that help you do things better than what you were doing. Um, and then later you go back to them and raise them up. So I just maxed out my D3. Now, because one, it now gets the it got I got free cloaking on it and I need it for the cloaking activities. It's the only one. And I haven't felt like paying for cloaking on any of the higher ships of Klingons. Um, so that makes it a little more valuable. So I have uh, just maxed it out. But it's also one that I would naturally scrap later um, in order to um, help with prime acquisition. Now, the Mayflower is the is the king of those that you max out in order to uh, in order to scrap. Uh, to help you with doing primes. So you can get get it up there. But again, with the D3, the Mayflower, and the Legionary, you're probably getting them up there somewhere between tiers four and six, depending on what they're doing for you and when you're getting the next ship, uh, depending on how slow or fast you're going um, and all that. And so, but just knowing that at least the D3 and the Mayflower, you can, uh, if, you, if you overspend, you just have to wait to catch up for the next ships that you want to spend on with the same resources. Because this is a there's a bit of resource management to this game, so if you spend it all on your D3, you won't have it when you get your next interceptor until you've built it back up. Um, same thing with the Enterprise or the Mayflower and Gas, that kind of thing, Legionary and Or. So be aware of that, but you may want to come back later and boost them, or you may want to use these as ships that you build, you upgrade during ship building events that help you be more competitive and win some leaderboards, things like that. Then we have the Separatist D3 hijacked, well, the, the hijacked D3, the hijacked Mayflower, and the hijacked Legionary, which also comes in at 26. Um, I don't have any use for these. Uh, this is, this is, uh, these are great. They look nice. They're skins. Um, so if you want one of these, like if you can't, couldn't get one because you were, um, you couldn't get one because you have the wrong faction um, and you want it because you're a collector, more power to you. Nothing wrong with that. They do look kind of neat. Um, the hijack D3 does not have cloaking available on it like the other, um, the other D3. So be aware of that. Um, so that's not a reason to get it. Um, I use my resources elsewhere. Um, but if you want to collect them, that's no big deal. Um, but I try to actually actively avoid these ships. So, but I did dual faction. So I had two of the ones that I liked. I was okay. You know, your results may vary. Um, and then the last one where we're going to end on before we get to 28 is the Stella, which comes in at level shipyard level 27. The Stella is important. It's a one trick pony. It is for grinding those exchange armadas and the exchange transports. So it's its own mechanism. You have to scrap it periodically. Um, I find it to be a pretty fun mechanism. It's a lot like your Franklin. Um, and it's like your Franklin. It's not really useful elsewhere. But um, but it makes sense to do it. There's a lot of Stella events that we get, and there's um, events that happen in between arcs, the Apex Rogue stuff that happens. So it makes sense to be getting it and building it up. Neglecting any of the specialty ships is usually a bad idea, and that proves to be the same case with the Stella. I'm happy to not be neglecting it and working on it now, and there's just something about the Stella stuff that I actually like, and I can't fully explain. But let me know in the comments what you think. Then we're going to move into level 28 with the Bordas, the Saladin, and the Centurion. And this is where we start talking about ships that are more have more keeper life and longer longevity. But again, you want to be saving some of your resources for some of these ships and some of the ones that come at 32 and 34 in particular where you get your epic ships. Um, so that's another... 
another video, but just to give you an idea, just remember, importantly, don't get too wedded to your ships in these early level one, level one through level 26, because you are going to be getting new ships. You are going to want to save those resources and move forward. And uh, don't, don't outspend yourself because there's another ship on the horizon typically, and they happen very quickly between levels one and 26, but spend enough to be able to do what you need to do. Those are some of the lessons down there. Hey, if you find this video helpful at all or entertaining, please come check us out. Give us a like with the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because that really helps us. We're over 300 and we want to push to five and then a thousand. Uh, and we can only do that with your help. Also, uh, you know, giving a like and giving a comment helps boost this video with the algorithm. So share it with your friends who are wondering about early ships. And you hit that notification bell so you can check when I'm live. I also stream Star Trek Fleet Command on Sunday mornings on YouTube, as well as I stream multiple days a week, uh, Pacific time after work, typically in Saturday mornings on Twitch. All those links are down below in the description, as well as the link to my Discord. So you can join, ask me questions, and meet other people who play the games. So check us out, and I hope you'll take care, and cock-a-doodle-doo.